for me, one of the big things I really like about this film is the camera angles. Um, it's about perspective. It's about the fact they use Dutch tilt, so everything is slightly on, well, what we call in TV, on the piss. But in film, they call it Dutch. So, you know, if I was to do that, right. it's all shot like Well, it's not all shot like that, but a lot of it is shot. So you see these angles constantly through the film. The use of light, the use of shade, um, and I said perspective, looking down things. And I think one of the, the, the kind of, for me, the unsung hero of the film, outside of the physical actors, are the streets, the sewers. Uh, it is Vienna in the later part of the, in the 1940s after the war. It's, it's all shot on location. This whole film was shot on location. Thank you so much, Ken, for joining. And today we're going to talk about The Third Man. Yeah, The Third Man. One of my favourite films. Um, for a lot of reasons, for a lot of reasons. So it's not just about the plot, it's about the camera work. Uh, obviously, as a cameraman, I'm, I'm, I look at films, I think, in a slightly different way. Now, obviously, for you, this was a very new film. So I'm, give me your first impressions, your first thoughts, your first ideas. Um, what, what struck you about the film when you first watched it? Yeah, of all the movies that you suggested, this one I found to be the more difficult one, maybe because of those camera angles, maybe because of the lighting. And I think because of the historical aspect, I didn't know a lot about Vienna at the time after World War II. So I had to like watch it like three times to really get the whole gist of it. <laughs> That's dedication. That's dedication. It is dedication. But <laughs> okay so you I mean so after the th I mean having watched the film three times um your general overall thoughts my overall I mean the overall thoughts of it I mean it's it's like a murder mystery I guess is where I'd characterize it we have or the the character Holly Martin is just arriving into Vienna and it starts off with a narrator kind of telling about how it's right after World War II and how the city is being ruled by three powers France, England, America, and Russia, and that the city is kind of separated in different sectors, but the middle is being ruled by somebody from each country. Now the city, it's divided into four zones, you know, each occupied by a power, the American, the British, the Russian, and the French. And yep. so here comes Holly Martin, who is down on his luck and doesn't have a job, and his friend Harry Lyme has offered him a job, and he arrives, and he goes to Harry's apartment only to find out that Harry has just died. And so that's like where you, you, you find out that like he's got come here to Vienna with not a penny to his name and his friend that was going to offer him a job has died. Under very strange circumstances as well, obviously one of the things we have to throw in here is that Holly Martin is an author. He's an author of pulp fiction, cowboy kind of paperbacks of the era which are slightly I think probably a little bit of crime thrillers in themselves so the idea is that he's a crime writer but using mm -hmm. the, the genre of the American West probably in the mid 80s so sort of 1850-ish sort of cowboy kind of era and obviously he comes across the fact that his friend has been killed and he's, he's given a basic account of what happened by the building porter, as it were, in very fragmented English. So the porter has enough English to kind of give an idea as to what happened, but gets a couple of things wrong. I think he says, was it, um, that's heaven and that's hell on the, st on the stairway when he talks about uh, Harry Lyme's death. The story then starts to roll. He's trying to work out exactly what happened. And this is where the, the idea of the third man comes in because Harry Lyme is carried across the road after having been struck by a vehicle by three men. And it, it kind of rolls from, from there. So, I mean, kind of why did you have a problem following the plot? Why did you have a problem following this plot? I mean, I think it might have been that I'm not as used to watching some black and white movies as other. And so that can somewhat make it confusing to figure out who's who. And then trying to figure out with the whole city being broken up into different sectors and, you know, why was like, I didn't really catch the first time around that he was Holly had just come there because he didn't have a job. Like I didn't catch all these little details in it. Right. So I think that was it. And then. I did get that 
he started to have some suspicion of the the accident because yeah. some people were saying that there was two people that helped him across the street after he got hit, and then other times that the story was there were three people so there was like some differences in the story again i think for me this this the story is it's a great story but i think the idea that martin holly martin is is a sort of thinks he's an investigator and starts investigating this story and he keeps coming up against these issues and these problems and this the fact that none of the stories seem to match going back slightly you're talking about the historical fact that austria and big parts of Germany were split after World War II. As you said, there were four sections in, in Vienna with the central section, a bit like Berlin, which were ruled by all of the occupying countries. And the other areas around the periphery of, of Vienna are run by individual states, and they run this police force. There's a situation where Martin comes into contact with the British when he goes to the funeral of Harry Lyme, Mm-hmm. And you have this 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 scene where um, Lyme is being buried, and this funeral's happening, and uh, Major Calloway is in the background along with the sergeant whose name I can't remember. I know the actor, but I can't remember the, the sergeant's mm-hmm. name. And they're kind of spying to see who's come to the funeral. And there's some very interesting characters. Uh, there's the uh, it's Dr. Winkler and the Baron and a couple of other people who have got great faces. I mean, these people have got some amazing faces and the, 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 whole, um, the whole film is littered with some great faces, some great character faces, some of the extras and those in the background. The story then starts to develop you know, he starts to deal with the policing forces of Vienna at that particular point, and it was very much the British side of the policing force and Mitchell Calloway and the sergeant. And it, he starts to kind of understand that this death might not be as straightforward as he thought, and that his friend Harry Lyme may not have been as nice as he thought. Um, a little later in the film, there is it is in, inferred that potentially Harry Lyme may have had a bit of a dodgy past. But, you know, at that particular point, you're not sure. It seems like Harry Lyme is a really nice guy. Da, 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 da. These guys have been friends for a lot of years. And he starts to kind of understand through these chats that he was involved in the black market. But Martin sees the black market as, and it's, it's kind of sort of inferred in the first few seconds of the film where there's a watch, there's an arm rolled up and there's lots of watches and there's things being passed across, nylons and food. We'd run anything if people wanted it enough and had the money to pay. But this black market he's involved in, Harry Lamb is in theory involved in, is the black market of penicillin, which is one, a very new drug, a very important drug in terms of fighting infection. Harry Lamb has been, in theory, stealing this or getting, getting, he's been receiving this, watering it down and then selling it on in the black market. And the effect has been that uh, babies and people in hospitals have been dying or have had severe side effects as a result of having had this this watered down this tampered penicillin uh, injected into them. Uh, I mean, one of the other characters who comes into this film is obviously Anna, Harry Lyme's girlfriend, who's a actress. She's also at the funeral. These characters roll through, and the story develops as Martin tries somehow dealing with all of these characters to work out what exactly happened. I mean, for me, that it, that's a great story, but I think one of the things which struck me was very difficult. For me, one of the big things I really like about this film is the camera angles. Um, it's about perspective. It's about the fact they use Dutch tilt. So everything is slightly on, well, what we call in TV, on the piss. But in film, they call it Dutch. So, you know, if I was to do that, Right. It's all shot like, well, it's not all shot like that, but a lot of it is shot like that. So you see these angles constantly through the film, the use of light, the use of shade, um, and I said perspective looking down things. And I think one of the, the, the kind of, for me, the unsung hero of the film, outside of the physical actors, are the streets, the sewers. Uh, it is Vienna in the later part of the, in the 1940s after the war. It's all shot on location. This whole film was shot on location. And as much as the story about this, the intrigue as to the death of Harry Lyme and the racketeering and the people involved in telling the story about how he died, 
and the, the inconsistencies in the story. For me, half of the it, half of it is about the film in terms of that storyline, and the other half is just about the visuals of this film, which mm -hmm. I still to this day, having watched the film again just the other day, just sitting there just going, I love the way this film shot. I love the shadow. I love the fact that this perspective is used quite regularly. Um, that for me is is one of the reasons I chose the film. On top of the fact, I think, again, you know, as a, as a language learning exercise, it's a relatively easy, clear film to listen to. Uh, the English is definitely easy. It's an older film, so the English is slower and very clear. I think the the camera angles that you talk about does make it interesting, but then the, the harsh shadows can, I think, make it visually hard. I think it's to develop, I was talking to my father about it. And he said, there's a lot of tension and the whole idea of using those angles, my father's a photographer and ah, the idea right. of those angles and of the, of the, the harsh shadowing and, and the, and the music that is throughout it is that there's a lot of tension in it. Like really it intensifies the tension throughout the film because there's tension throughout the different act, the, the different characters, the, the death mm -hmm. and the, you know, the lost love and all the stuff that's going on. So there's a lot of tension. And so that might be another reason that I had a hard time with it. I do think that having interesting angles makes, can make a, like looking at things in a way that we don't normally, because we always just look at it where our eyes are looking, but if they kind of move the camera or they tilt it, we're looking at things a little different. So it can make it interesting, but I think maybe the harsh lighting is what I had, had a hard time with a film noir that a kind of technique which was brought in well which was created I think in the mid 30s um, the film was shot four by three so the old television screen so if you took sort of 20 percent off either side of your frame four by three that emphasizes a lot more these angles films quite often today are shot in, on the Dutch you know but because everything's shot quite wide these days either cinemascope or Panavision or all the different because there were quite a few different kind of formats it's not as noticeable I think it's probably more noticeable because of the four by three so all the angles really do uh, kick over you mentioned something there which again I should have said you know we have the actors we have this we have the storyline we have what I like which is the street scenes the light the perspective the shadows the shadows are really well used but this, I'm, I'm going to try and say this word because it's not even, the Sither music, this lovely piece of da 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 which runs through the film. That piece of music is just, for me, also helps to add to the, the strength of this film. There is music in the film. Again, going back to films of this era, the music track is normally quite subtle. It's not in your face. It's not used to, to reinforce anything. It just sits in the background, apart from this one piece of music, and it's used quite regularly to build tension um, throughout the film. So, I mean, yeah, there's the music, there's the music, there's this Sither instrument, mm -hmm. there's like the landscape of bombed out Vienna and the sewer system, and obviously the storyline. So for me, those... Those three things are, are what really helped to make this film a very watchable film for me. Uh, I mean, if, you, if we go back to the plot slightly, it does it does revolve around to some extent friendship betrayed uh, with with uh, with Martin and Harry Lyme, but it also to some extent deals with the love that Anna has for Harry Lyme and the fact that she's not prepared to or she's prepared to overlook his involvement in the black market. Just... Harry, get away. The police are outside. Quick. Anna. But not just the black market of shoes, of, of food, of petrol, gasoline, those simple things, but the black market of a product which will kill, which is killing, which is maiming innocent people. So she's she's very much, she's so in love. She's Her, her view of Harry Lyme is very, very narrow. She's not prepared to, to see what's happening outside of, in his life outside of that. I think, which is another part of the film which I kind of quite liked. It's, it's another element, another element of uh, one of the characters, one of the, the leading characters. We, we have to say, obviously, one of the things which is which we haven't mentioned at the moment is that um, Harry isn't in fact dead. He's faked his death, and that was part of the whole thing. Why there's this whole mystery? Why is this third man and such? Is that he's faked his death? And when you mentioned that that Anne is not willing to, like, she still is in love with him and she's still like she will overlook the fact that what he's done is killing children and killing people mm. but 
Holly's not willing. Like he, when he realizes that he's mm-hmm. done with the friendship, he's willing to, to help the police catch him. So I think that's the difference because obviously Anna has a, a romantic relationship yeah. and the romantic relationship is, you know, causing her not to like think rationally about it. Well, with Holly, it's like a friendship, like they're buddies, they had fun, they drank from the pub, they played cards, you know, card tricks and all that. But he's like, okay, nope, you've killed people and that's just too much. Yeah, and I think that initially he's he's a little bit skeptical as well, but obviously when he's taken to the hospital um, and he walks through the hospital and he's seeing all these babies and what, it's all inferred, it's all inferred. There's one little shot where uh, I think the nurse is drawing a diagram of the heat going up and there's a teddy bear put down as in the baby's just died. Yeah. And at that particular point, um, Holly, I think it clicks to Holly that this is the end result of his friend, Harry Lyon, doctoring this penicillin and selling it into the black market. And obviously at that particular point, he then decides to betray Harry Lyon. But there's a, there's a, there, there is a sequence on the Ferris wheel where Harry and um, Harry and Martin are chatting and they're discussing. Well, Harry Lyme is basically saying that people are worthless. He, he's looking down at all these people on the top of the Ferris wheel going, what happens? You know, what if some of them die? Who cares? Look down there. Would you really feel any pity if one of those dots stopped moving forever? If I offered you 20,000 pounds for every dot that stopped, would you really, old man, tell me to keep my money? Or would you calculate how many dots you could afford to spend? He's looking at the world in terms of money, uh, but he opens the door and you kind of think, hmm, what's going to happen here? Because he's, he's so involved in just making money that he will kill. There's no proof against me. Besides you. Pretty easy to get rid of. And the porter who originally saw or saw the body, Harry, in theory, being taken across the road after it being knocked down, who's been chatting to, to, to Martin um, about what happened, he dies an unusual death. Um, so, you know, it, it, it is inferred very, very quickly that Lyme will kill. He will kill anybody to, to protect his turf, to protect his income coming in. So um, that's you know it, the, the the that's that particular point where the friendship between the pair of them sort of ends, and he decides to p- betray him, and he does. And there's a sequence where Lyme comes to meet Martin in a cafe, and he suddenly realizes he's been betrayed, and then there's this whole sequence in the sewers, which is amazing. It's, it's an amazing, amazing location. I think one of the things you have to sort of leave behind is the fact that sewers normally aren't lit and it's beautifully lit there's these huge backlit scenes where the shadows are running and people are running through the water and you see the rats are running around and the use of sound there's a lovely piece which i really love where um harry lime is sort of trapped in i'm going to say a concentration area where all the sewers are coming in and the military forces have come into the sewers chasing him. And you can just hear the sounds echoing down these feeder chambers into the sewerage area. Um, so, you know, the, again, I'm just going to go back to one of the reasons I love this, the, the, the physical scenery where it's been shot. And I just find for that period of time, just an amazing, amazing thing. It's all shot on location. It's not a studio. Interesting that I was reading a little bit of like fun facts or interesting facts is that Harry Lyme used a body double in the sewers because he didn't want to be breathing the air. So the close-ups are filmed in London. And there is that iconic scene of the fingers coming up because he's trying mm-hmm. to get out of the sewer. And that particular is not him, but that is very famous. And even my 12-year-old daughter recognized that because that must be like very famous and be mm-hmm. seen, like maybe it's in memes or something because she's like, I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, body doubles, stunt doubles are not unusual. Um, you say it was shot in London. Did you so the lo- close-ups, the close-ups were yeah, shot in yeah, London. Yeah, 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 quite correct. Fifteen percent um, or something of that of the sewer scenes or whatever, because he did not yeah. want to be in the sewer. So there's well, a body double. They're real sewers. They're real sewers. They're real yeah, sewers. Yeah, they are real. Um, 
so yes, quite correct, little bits were shot in London because obviously it's a, it was a British film and it's not unusual to film little bits to catch up on later. But um, did you spot the, um, the double-decker buses, London double-decker buses? I did not. Okay, so there's a scene where you've got uh, Calloway, the sergeant and Martin sat in a Jeep and they're driving around and it's a back projection. It looks like a back projection. And uh, there are double-decker buses running around the back. Hmm. You wouldn't, there, were, there were none in Vienna. So that was actually shot. They were, they were London double-decker buses. I miss that. I think because like sometimes your eye is like so focused in on the people that I totally, oh, like, yes. I didn't see that, but I will, like, I'm definitely going to look when I'm editing this and look for that. Those double yeah, if you, if you, yeah, if you go back, there's the three of them in the Jeep and they're driving. So it's a, it's a front on sh shot of just the Jeep windscreen and the three of them and they're driving. Uh, they, I think there are actually two shots, one where um, Martin is in the passenger seat and then later he's in the back seat. But if you look carefully in the background, you will see slightly out of focus, but you'll see the two layers of double-decker bus go by. Um, I'd never noticed that until I did the same thing. I did a bit of reading up. I thought, oh, good. I, I, know, I know the film. I know the film. Well, you do and you don't. So I watched a couple of things and then did a little bit of research uh, just to kind of clarify my own accuracy as to what this, you know, about this film. And uh, yeah, this is, um, did anyone spot the double-decker buses? And I'm going, I've seen this film like 12, 15 times. No. And as soon as it was mentioned, I went, bang, yes, there, there are the double-decker buses. So, yes, um, for all those people who like to pick small faults with films, the sort of inaccuracies and things not being quite correct, double-decker buses, which um, are driving one on the wrong side of the road, and two, they wouldn't have had. <laughs> right. But obviously, th this sewer sequence, this end sewer sequence, is where Lyme eventually meets his end. But again, it's... <sighs> Does he meet his end because he shoots himself or does he meet his end because Holly Martin shoots him? There's that little look where Lyme looks at Martin as in, please, do kill me because I don't want to be, I don't want to be taken away. I don't want to be uh, taken into custody kind of situation. Backtrack slightly. He's been shot in a gun in a, in a shooting with the sergeant um, who dies. And Calloway stays with the sergeant as he's when he's dead. Um, Martin chases after Lyme with a gun, goes up a spiral staircase. Um, Lyme has been shot, and, and at this particular point, there's these little looks. You're not quite sure what's happening, but it is implied that Lyme is asking for Martin to kill him. Um, one, because he's been injured, and two, because he does not want to be taken prisoner. He does not want to be taken into custody by the police. And there's a bang, as you see um, Calloway with the sergeant realising that Martin has left. And then Martin walks down as a, as a, as a, as a silhouette. It's inferred, and that's all that's inferred. But um, yes, the last part of the film is left slightly ambiguous as to, as to how Lyme if indeed he is dead, but how potentially he dies. Does he shoot himself or does uh, does Martin shoot him? Right, right. And I didn't, I, I, I guess I didn't notice that in my three times of watching it. I did see that he was shot, but I didn't see that look of saying, please shoot me because I don't want to be captured. Yeah, and then we have the, the second funeral where he's actually dead. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the uh, something we haven't mentioned, very remiss of the pair of us, is that Martin kind of falls in love with Anna. Oh, he right. Has this he has this attraction to Anna. You can see that he's kind of attracted to her. And that kind, of, that kind of trickles through the film quite a bit. It's not kind of like really pushed, but you do see that he's got an attraction to her. And I'm going to bring something else in there. Martin is a drunkard. I do seem to like films with people who get drunk. Are the police after you? I don't know. You're drunk, aren't you? A bit. I'm sorry. He is. He is. <laughs> there's a there's a couple of scenes where um, one of the initial scenes where he's dealing with the British, and then throughout the film, you can see him sort of um, taking to the bottle quite a bit, as it were. Um, what are, there is a difference between the way the British film was cut and the way the American film was cut between the original narration on the British and the American film. I think the American film was about. 
if I understand from from what I would have read, the American film was about ten minutes shorter than the British film. Oh, um, and there's a couple of scenes put in, uh, one of which was of a very scantily young dressed young lady dancing in one of the nightclubs, which kind of shows the seedy side of Vienna at the end of the war. That was left out of the American version, but not the British version because of censorship. Oh, I have no idea. I've, I'm guessing I saw the American version, but I don't know what version I had. Okay, I think the American version is roughly 90 minutes. The British version is just over 100, I think. Just do about, I mean, it's not unusual again for, for films, even to today, that slightly different cuts will be made for slightly different audiences and to fit certain requirements or to fit potentially the tolerances of different people. It's not unusual for British and American films to, to one, have different titles for the same film, to be slightly differently cut or for the endings to be slightly changed just because it fits better with an American audience or a British audience or a European audience. So you know, it passed nothing even today, that still happens. So a film will be recut for, say, an audience in India or Pakistan or Africa or Europe. The, the, you know, things will be left out or put in depending upon which market it's going into. Oh, okay. Interesting. Like I said, I've probably got about 12 or 13 more viewings of this film than you, but I suggest you go back and, and have a look for the Double Decker Buses and have a look for the little scene where Line looks over to Martin and basically does that look of, please shoot me. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> will be doing that for sure. And yeah, so it was definitely something that I wouldn't have watched otherwise. So I thank you for suggesting it. I think it's a good historic, you know, knowing a little bit about what was yeah. going on after the war and about how the city was like, an in, at that time, almost like an international city at the time. And a murder mystery, a yes. love, you know, not a love story, but a little bit of, uh, you know, there, there was a romantic mm -hmm. relationship between Anna and Harry. And then Holly obviously having some, interest in Anna she rejected him mm. at the end at the end of the last yes. funeral yes um yes so yes. quite right royally would be the expression we use yes in the because he, he's yeah. like waiting he's standing on the side of this tree-lined road and waiting for her to walk by and hoping that she's gonna stop and talk to him but she just walks by without even giving him a second look I mean yeah. in a way he's responsible for her her lover or her, her boyfriend Harry for dying because he shot him. She, um, mm. Holly turned in Harry and he also shot him. So like she's like, no, I don't want anything to do with you. Yeah, that very much. And it's at the end of the film is kind of very much a repeat of the beginning of the film because although yes, it starts where where Martin comes in to, to Vienna, finds that his friend's dead, then goes to the funeral. The film finishes with the funeral, you know. At some later point, but it's it's almost a carbon kind of copy of the same thing happening again. And again, that, that last shot, just that perspective of the tree line street, the road, him standing next to this cart with, with what looks like logs in it, and she's just walking down the center and just keeps walking and walking and walking, and the film just finishes. But um uh well, I mean, we're gonna have to find you, or you're gonna have to find me a different film for, for the next time. I mean, um, that was my choice. Well, I was um, actually um thinking of one that is a British movie and Ooh. I was looking at some different ones and I was thinking of doing the importance of being earnest the version with Colin Firth oh yes because you're a big Colin Firth fan yes I am so. <laughs> there's no ulterior motive for this one is there? no no not a film I've seen not okay. a film I've seen so um I'm gonna have to uh, either hit one of the streaming sites or as I normally do I'm going to hit eBay and get myself a copy because I like to have a hard copy. I like to be able to at least say I can watch that again at a much later date. So I'm going to go hunting on eBay for a hard copy of the film. Thank you yeah. very much. Brilliant. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you again. Um, I'm, well, after, after this, I'm going to have to go hunting for another film, which, um, which I'm hoping you're going to understand the first time and it's not going to jar so much in terms of your visual perspective in terms of the angles but uh, no thank you very much for the chat I hope those who get the chance to watch this film enjoy the film uh, and yeah thank you very much all right thank you